Welcome to Truth, Money, and Freedom. Today is Thursday, July 25th, 2019. An interesting story here, gang, and it's talking about the long-neglected commodity that is ready to roar, says Commerce Bank. That's a German bank. Uh, lots of banks are, are uh, not, I'm sorry, lots of people are starting to say silver's time has come. But this is Market Watch. And it seems to me that it's uh, Market Watch uh, carries a lot of stories that would be considered mainstream. So anytime a bank releases something, it's mainstream anyway. I've got comments on it. I'm not going to really read the article to you. Uh, but I will link it down below. But it's, it's very interesting that um, we're talking about a long neglected commodity. And that is absolutely untrue. It has not been neglected. It's been manipulated down by governments and banks. Governments and banks do that. And uh, here we talk about 16 62 an ounce. Well, that's the paper price. And that determines the physical price. So we have a, um, and it's a 13-month high. In other words, it hasn't been this high in over a year. And I think that I've got a lot of things to say. I, I want to talk about mainly the fundamentals versus technical analysis. And technical analysis matters, but in a manipulated market, it may not uh, for the spot price of silver, but it may for the miners. And uh, I want to bring your attention to something here. And that is um, when I started talking about silver on the channel, because we're pretty sure we hit a bottom at that point. And uh, that, uh, by the way, I, I, do, I don't take credit for all of that. I'm at four ounces, was looking into fundamentals, chaos, Craig, people in our Truth, Money, and Freedom Discord server. Um, we look into these things. And we pretty much figured out silver was at an all-time low. Both with uh, four ounces looking into fundamentals and then chaos, Craig, doing technical analysis of not only the spot price of silver, but also the junior miners in the ETF, SILJ, as well as Franklin Mining, uh, which have all gone up quite a bit. I, I neglected to, to secure time with Craig, Chaos Craig, to actually get him in for a podcast. Um, we just literally couldn't sync up our schedules. So that's what happened there. But And that happens a lot, gang. I mean, I, I have the best intentions to do podcasts with the gang. But like I said, um, getting schedules, you know, s synchronized is a very difficult thing sometimes. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about with silver. Once again, I'm keeping this mainly about silver here. Mike Maloney is talking about, um, you know, a whale in the silver market is buying up uh, silver. And once again, this is something that was put out on July 16th. Now, I want to let you know that the 29th of April, by the way, 29th of April, 2019, that's when I put out the, uh, the first Silver is Unloved Time to, to Acquire and started talking about silver because we were pretty sure bottom was hit at that point. And that's why I was really kind of putting out these videos. So let's go look at the charts here. And let's look at April 29th. Okay, April 29th, right there, $14.69. Now, were we at a bottom? No, we weren't. It went a little bit lower yet, but we weren't that far off. Uh, between fundamentals and technical analysis, four ounces, chaos, Craig, um, we were able to figure out that was pretty much the bottom. Well, it actually went a little bit lower. It went to 1441 and 1442. Okay, 1441. So it did go, you know, a little bit lower than that. So 1469, let's say 1470, down to 1440. So we missed the low by 30 cents, but we were really close, really close. Um, and that is literally April. So uh, April 29th is when we said that. Well, look where it is now, 1646. So it's almost two full dollars higher than when we, we thought we hit the bottom. But we didn't know anything about this whale. We knew nothing about this whale. But I'll tell you what, the whale was also doing technical analysis. <laughs> he was also looking at the fundamentals. No one knows who the whale is, by the way. Could it be China? Sovereign fund from China? Chinese government? Could it be the U.S. government hedging against the dollar? I mean, anyone's guess. Uh, we don't know who the whale is. We don't pretend to know. Mike Maloney doesn't know. And Mike Maloney is saying, you know, I've thought about it, and I just, you know, there's no way to know for sure. 
and it doesn't matter because it's good for silver. So let's just be grateful that there's a whale out there who sees this quote unquote undervalued asset, this repressed asset and realizes it's going to have to go up. Otherwise, the silver industry is finished because the silver, um, the, the primary silver miners would go bankrupt and all the, private, private, or the uh, silver mines that the primary miners are mining out of get closed. And then there's not enough silver for demand, period. So that was the fundamentals, fundamentals on why silver had to go up. But the technical analysis on not just spot price of silver, but on the silver miners and Franklin, not Franklin, uh, First Majestic, uh, said that they're going to go up anyway. So it all ties in, gang. But what I'm saying here is that, um, yeah, we may have gone up, um, you know, maybe two bucks. And by the way, they're taking a uh, hammer to silver right now. Um, As you can see here, it was higher here just yesterday. And now they're hitting it with hammers. And that's because uh, the COMEX uh, has options expiry today. And the LBMA has options expiry, I think, on Monday. So they're going to hammer down silver like they always do. By the way, you could set your watch by options expiring. And that's the end of every month. So you could set your watch by it. They always hammer down silver at the end of the month. Right before options expiry. Right before. Or the day before. Sometimes, but usually it's the same day. So that's because they can literally go in on a computer keyboard and just say, well, silver is actually 50 cents cheaper. And they just type it in and bam, the spot price goes down 50 cents. And if you think I'm exaggerating on that, do some research. That's how badly silver is manipulated. And it's bold. It's naked. It's in your face. And we deal with that as silver and gold bugs. We know that the government manipulates um, the price of gold and silver, that it's highly illegal. But they do it anyway. And no one ever comes to uh, any type of major prosecution for it. Deutsche was caught doing it for a long time. They were spoofing the price along with 19 other banks. Deutsche was prosecuted for it. The 19 other banks got away scot-free, by the way, even though they were caught. And Deutsche was fined $4 million for making $4 billion manipulating down the price of silver. And that's... That's how corrupt our government is. There's no justice, you know, for banks when they break the law. Banks get to break break the law. They get to do illegal things, just like J.P. Morgan, you know, gets to bring in $1.2 billion worth of cocaine on a ship that was owned by their asset group, MSC. And all that happened, and by the way, um, that's just been a blip on the radar. It has not been in the mainstream media. It has been in the alternative media. We have been told... J.P. Morgan lost their ship. That's it. That's all that happened. No other, uh, nothing else happened. So just understand that banks are above the law. Government officials are above the law. It's you and I that are constantly being crushed by the law. So as long as you understand that, you understand gold and silver pretty well. So when they're ready for it to go up, it will go up. And you got to be sure to be on that gravy train when it actually starts going down, you know, the tracks. You have got to be on that train. And that's one of the gravy trains I see. The other is a possible, you know, crypto gravy train. And when a wealth transfer happens, you know, this is where the money's going to go. It's going to go into crypto. It's going to go into precious metals. In my opinion, by the way, I am not a financial consultant. I'm telling you <clears throat> what I, pardon me, I'm telling you what I am doing. So... Okay, we look at Friday close, 1620, and, um, and then it came down about that low again, you know, literally on the 23rd, and then it rises up, and it got hit down just a little bit on the, uh, it, once again, the 23rd, then it rises up, comes down again on the 24th, it tries to rise up after that hammer hit, and then it gets slammed down again with another hammer hit today, and once again, this is options expiry. And then, so it continue, we'll continue to probably see this tomorrow and Monday morning. And then silver will start going up again. Um, so this is the pattern. So back to the story here. Um, silver's at a, a one-year high right now, 13-month high. And here's the amazing part. Silver goes down in the summer. It always goes down. It's going up now. Well, that's because of 
the whale. I think that's the reason why, because normally they smash it down real hard. So is it time for silver to actually rise in price and become valuable again? Will it ever be a monetary metal again? I don't know. I don't think so. But it, once again, it's a very, very, very valuable um, resource. Uh, it's just they do so much with silver. That's on the fundamental side. You know, but when they smash down the price, like you've been seeing, you know, go back to the year view. They smash down the price to 14 bucks, $14.03. They're killing the mining industry. Once again, this is the paper price, gang. There is no, no physical uh, price actually chart. It doesn't exist. It's because the spot price determines the physical price. And this is below the primary mining's cost, $14.03. That's where the primary miners start going out of business and their mines start getting, you know, mothballed. So it had to go up from there. And this is in 2018. So it did go up. And then it came down again. But the fact of the matter is, it's an unloved asset because the government makes sure that it's unloved. They push it down along with the big banks, the central banks. They push it down. But is it time for it to go up? Well, there's one individual or entity on the market right now, the, the whale, that is betting heavily that it's time for it to go up. Now, I, I'm going to go ahead and link this Mike Maloney uh, video, but be sure and look at his videos because I think he's done a grand total of three videos about the whale now. And uh, this has just been in the last, oh, I'd say the last week. So there's other videos on YouTube, speculation of who the whale is. Um, but their intentions are very clear. They are going long silver. That means this whale is betting very heavily that the price is about to go up on silver. And when and they're going lo as long as they are, it's probably going to be up a lot. Now, what does that mean? What does a lot mean? A lot means different things to different people. I'm betting heavily that silver is going to go to at least $24 this year. However, this is based on a very jaded uh, point of view. Um, I have to say, I've seen silver just get smashed, just absolutely smashed, when there was no reason to smash it. Um, but there are reasons for governments and banks to smash silver, because it is actual competition to fiat currency. So how long will it go on? I don't know. But a whale is betting now that this process of smashing silver is about to be over. It's about to be done. And they saw the same thing Chaos Craig saw. I guarantee it, because they were buying in quite heavily, um, you know, at what we saw was the bottom. Now, this whale started buying before then, but we didn't know about the whale. So you go into um, uh, April, you know, basically, and you see 1469, that low that we saw back then. Um, I'm sure because they, they were buying pretty good uh, right after that. So they were seeing the same thing Chaos Craig saw, and that's what everyone else saw. People are buying physical silver, but they're also buying the paper silver. Don't be the paper silver buyer. And I'm not a financial consultant. I'm just saying that um, this market is too volatile to bet on the paper, and here's the reason why. Um, because if silver does go higher than 24 and we're looking at another instance where it goes to 50 or up, $50 or up, there's going to be a divergence in the paper and the uh, actual silver because they won't be able to pay out on that unless, unless we go into a hyperinflation and they can afford to pay off derivative contracts. So by they, I'm talking the COMEX, by the way. The COMEX and JP Morgan on SLV. Um, the COMEX would be on silver futures. Uh, J.P. Morgan kind of runs the show, though. Uh, so I, uh, this is my advice, uh, in, uh, realizing, of course, I'm not a financial consultant. I'm not a financial guru. I just look for undervalued assets. That's what I do. And silver is still a, an incredibly undervalued asset. But I won't buy the paper. And I don't recommend you buy the paper either. Get the physical. Get the real thing. 
in that way, if there's a divergence between paper and physical, you're fine. If you have paper and there's a divergence, uh, I suspect you're going to get screwed on the price. So that's my opinion. I can't prove it. But we'll see what happens because there's a lot of folks out there right now that are predicting silver will go from, I mean, dare I say it? Should I even say it out loud? Should I knock on wood? Um, a lot of people are saying silver is going to go to between two and $400 per ounce in today's dollars within two years. So that means it will actually be significantly higher than two or $400 because we're about ready to start printing money, folks. I just did a story about this. This is the last story I did on the podcast channel. And that story is silver. Um, I'm sorry, not silver, but uh, the there's no spending cap now for two years. And that is highly unusual um, for standard economics within the United States of America. Um, it, but it isn't if you understand that we're going into a hyperinflation. They're going to have to print money. And that is very, very bad for the dollar. It's very bad for us inside the United States and the dollar. It's really good for those outside the United States. You know, it'll be good for exports. Uh, from the United States to other countries. It'll be good for other countries that owe dollar-denominated debt, but it will not be good for you and me when we go to the grocery store or when we go to the, uh, you know, the clothing store to buy a new pair of jeans. It won't be good for us, but it'll be good for everyone outside the U.S. But when they print money like this, gold and silver should be going up. And by the way, they're both repressed. They're suppressed right now. They should be much higher than they are, um, keeping in mind what happened in 2008, all the way to 2015. That's quantitative easing, three sets of it. Silver and gold should be significantly higher than they are now. They're being kept low. So are they, can they continue to do it? Well, maybe. Um, but, you know, I'm betting that this whale knows something that the rest of us don't. He's betting very heavily that silver is going to go up probably by a lot. We don't know who it is, what they're thinking. We don't know what country they're in. We don't know anything. You know, someone knows, and it's just not getting out. Um, but you won't hear about this on the mainstream media, this whale, you know, uh, diving into silver. Okay, well, that being, you know, said, and we've looked at the charts, we know where silver is right now. Back to the weak view. Yeah, the hammer is hit, and hopefully the hammer is done for now, but we'll see. Silver keeps going up, though, even after the hammer hits. Um, so what's going on in the markets today? Well, we're seeing red. So markets are down slightly. Looks like the um, bonds are selling off. They're not being purchased. They're actually being sold off right now. Oil. Oil up just a little bit. And, um, you know, you got your silver and your gold right here, but we kind of covered that already. And Bitcoin up a little bit, about 10,000. So that's pretty much the uh, story for today, gang. Um, yeah, I know Boris Johnson is now the prime minister. Brexit will become news again. And I'll throw out pertinent stories when uh, the time comes. The fact that Boris is prime minister is not worthy of doing a podcast, in my opinion. But... Um, uh, we will we will follow that very closely. We're also f still following precious metals and cryptos, gang. If there's any big news, I'll go ahead and throw it out on the channel. And with any luck, I will be uh, doing a podcast with Conjecture, uh, hopefully tonight. So at any rate, you guys all have a wonderful day, and may God bless each and every one of you.